hey, this is a special video for everybody. Uh, whether you're subscribed to my newsletter, Crypto is Easy, if you're a premium subscriber, free subscriber, not subscribed at all. I wanted to talk about the cryptocurrency market now, look back on where we've been and look where we're going as I've been writing about in the, as I wrote about in January and December for the Crypto is Easy monthly. This is the transition from what, you know, what people call smart money, which is not, it's not that you're smart, intelligent, but just like you're, you're in on the game. People who have been in this, been in cryptocurrency for a while and institutional investors who have started to come in and kind of that, it, and we're, we're still in the middle of that shift to um, it, just normal people, normal people who are getting turned on to what's going on in crypto. And I thought that this was a really great time. It's, it's just, it's so important right now to take a moment to walk through history, going back to January, 2019, when this bull run started. I know if you're new, this is a really exciting time. Even if you're not, this is a really exciting time. And I remember how I felt when, when I got in, um, which was uh, towards the end of 2017. And it was just a magical feeling. And I didn't have a lot of money in the market because I just wasn't sure about, I, I, I don't know. I just didn't know what I know now. Um, and I, but I remember it was a magical feeling. It was an amazing feeling. Um, the one thing about my newsletter, Crypto is Easy, I always take the long, I, I always try to take the long view. Yeah, I know I, I talk about the market in the moment, but that's because that's the only way you can talk about it, right? It, otherwise, it's just an abstraction. You have to be specific, prices, movements, things like that. Um, but really, I mean, I, it's looking at the, it's taking a step back, looking at the big picture, right? Look, taking the long view, looking at the macro trends, these big shifts in momentum and movement that really make the, make, um, that really drive the markets. And you know, my involvement in cryptocurrency is to build long-term wealth through owning a small stake in these financial networks, what I call the financial networks of the future. And you know, as we, as all coins start popping off, and you get a lot of people coming in, and they see the price go up, they want to, you know, they want to make money off of that. This is so my approach is a little different because it's just a different goal, and it's a different objective. So you have to have a different strategy, a different plan, and do different things to make the most. To, to get that goal as opposed to the goal of I'm going to buy the the hot this next hot altcoin ride it up to a two or three x and then sell and then which is fine which is good I mean it's really healthy market activity and uh, you can do very well with that it's just not really me um, for me it's really a strategy to make the most of the bull market the whole bull market not just this end uh, and with alt season upon us I, you know, some of the things that I, some of my analysis may seem counterintuitive, but I hope that it's really helpful. And to help everybody kind of understand where my mind is, I want to take a walk through history um, and, and really look at, and, and hopefully make, make this, um, my, my hope is in, in putting out this video that, is that everybody understands and appreciates why this moment is so important for cryptocurrency this time is so important for cryptocurrency and also understand where I'm coming from in my commentary and the things that I say and the things that I write. And if you're new or you weren't around since March when I first launched, you want to tune in for the whole update. Um, if you have been subscribed for a while, I mean, it's more like a recap, um, but hopefully you'll stick around for the whole video too. I don't want to make it too long, um, but just to let you know. Um, and before I start, I just want to briefly talk about my my own general perspective about the short term, like in this moment. Uh, and then I'll talk about the bigger picture. So, so first for the short term, and don't worry, I'll get into the prices and the charts and the other stuff, uh, the bigger picture, but I want to take a moment or two to talk about this moment. As if you've been subscribed, you know, I last bought Bitcoin in September, 2020 and some altcoins in November, 2020, except for uh, the altcoins that I mentioned in my altcoin reports and uh, the, the research that I do for a separate service called Altcoin Insights. And I link to those below in the description. Um, so those recommendations are long-term accumulations. The idea is to average in a little at a time. Keep doing it as long as the investment thesis holds up. Each has a specific investment thesis. It's not just you buy it, it goes up, you sell. But there's a clear reason why, you know, and it based on the circumstances, the technology, the team, the market fit, the size relative to what I see its growth potential being. 
So it, and that all goes into a specific thesis. It's not a trading recommendation. It's not anything that I would sell during all season. And I personally buy up to a specific allocation level, and then I chill. Once I meet my allocation level, I just I hang out. Sometimes it's great. You pick up Chainlink at 49 cents. Sometimes it's not so great. You pick up Ethland at the market cycle peak, and while everybody else is saying, oh, I just made 100 X, you're like, yeah, I made 6 X because I bought it when it was, I mean, because it dropped 99%, and then it was went down to 1% of its value. But I bought up to my allocation, so what are you going to do? Um, the, the point is, it's all about making... I mean, I call crypto is easy because you make it easy by, by taking these strategies and taking the long view. And depending on when we get the next opportunity to buy Bitcoin, yeah, I may bump up my allocation or maybe the rest of my overall like life portfolio grows with different assets that I have that have nothing to do with cryptocurrency. And my larger financial plan changes. My life changes. We don't know. It's not just crypto that I'm looking at. I might rebalance one part of my portfolio into crypto, bump up my allocation. The point is... It's all about the long-term goals and these life-changing wealth-building opportunities that you have. When you can get in on the ground floor of a new technology and ideally finding the, those altcoins that are you know, going to deliver 100 to 1,000x returns over maybe years. I mean, anybody who right now is rich on Bitcoin, a lot of those guys who, who's – I shouldn't say if you're rich on Bitcoin, but a lot of those guys who you hear about, oh my God, they made 100,000% on Bitcoin. They made you know a million percent on Bitcoin, 10,000% on Bitcoin. That's because they they held, they they got it at an opportune time, a very opportune time, and they didn't sell it. Um, they didn't sell it after it doubled or tripled or quadrupled. So for this bull run, at this moment, you don't need to think about that. And I don't mean to digress, but you know, people, I, I, I've gotten a lot of questions about all coins now. What should I buy? Look, just buy anything, DeFi, DEXs, and DAOs, and that includes governance tokens. And also smart contract platforms, especially the ones that have come out after the 2017 bull run. Um, I won't get into specific recommendations. I have the reports that I've put out for CryptoZZ subscribers, the specific altcoins, and I have the research I do for altcoin insights. Um, you know, these aren't designed to catch alt season. Alt season is just gravy. I would say just go to CoinGecko, uh, pull up the DeFi list, pick six of those, any six, maybe three from the top and three from the bottom, and then look at CoinGecko Dex list. And I'll link both of those in the description. Pick six at the top, pick six at the bottom, pick three at the top, three at the bottom, any rank. You know, I, I like the big, small approach, but it really doesn't matter. In alt season, they all go up. DeFi is very sexy now. Dex is... People like trading. The whole anti-Robin Hood thing is just icing on the cake. So don't even worry about it. People say Chainlink will never do a 10x. The, and, I'll, and I'll get to the cryptocurrency market in a second. I just want to finish this thought. People right now look at prices, especially been in the market for a while, and you've been like, there's no way this thing is going to do another 10x. Chainlink, I just mentioned that as one example. You know, And so they will never do 10x. So I'm just going to buy something else. And look... Chainlink and every other crypto could easily go 10x or more in the proper alt season. And the reason you want Chainlink is because it's the Oracle platform for DeFi. And there are other Oracle platforms that you probably want to get into because Oracles are a big part of DeFi in its present construct. So you get your Chainlink, Band, DIA, DOS. Pick a few more Oracle platforms if you want. Maybe some governance tokens, pure DeFi tokens, swapping lending protocols, all of that. All of it. Pick a few, pick many, and just, you know, and that's the thing, because we're at the point where if we get all season now, it, it won't matter. Things are just going to pop off. They're going to explode. They're already happening. Things are going to just zoom for really no reason other than hype. And, uh, you, you know, it's great if you can ride that hype. If not, it's, it's not going to be bad. Everything's going to go up. But that assumes we get all season now. We got... CME futures on Ethereum launching next week. That'll make it easier for people with big positions to go short the market, push prices down while also using, basically using their accumulated Ethereum to essentially manipulate the market downward. Uh, and then there's Bitcoin, which is still too hot for its own good, way ahead of itself. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and there's no way we get alt season if Bitcoin's price goes down. And if Bitcoin's price goes up, it's a virtual certainty. And that's what I want to talk about in this video, because it's a really delicate situation right now. 
it all hinges on Bitcoin. Maybe not for the reason you think. And let me walk you through history and maybe it helps get a, a little perspective in this moment. Keep in mind, in a year or two, this won't even matter. You'll laugh at the idea you were ever worried about a $35,000 Bitcoin. But in this moment, it's a real concern. I guess it's 37,000 now, um, but, it, it, but it's a real concern because at this point, it's only a question of how much higher we go before we fall, or maybe we, we fall from here. Um, I can tell you for a fact, there's no way $42,000 was a market cycle peak, but we could still go way back down. All season, Bitcoin zooming up, it's not a sure thing. Although, look, it, it, it's, I mean, it, it, is, it is looking good. Um, the point is, don't get ahead of yourself. If you're new, if you're not on the premium plan, let me take a few minutes to explain the path we've taken. As crypto is easy subscribers, taking this with me, along the way since March 2020, you haven't. Let's drop in and I want to take you through uh, each of the merely pivotal moments along the way and explain my thinking uh, around it, my thinking at that time and then in this moment. Um, so let's go to Bitcoin. This is this chart takes us back from December 2018. This was the bottom of the bear market, the end of the bear market right here. Um, and so what you see is you see this price here. That was the lowest it got. We did this pretty big run. We came back down. We probably would have bottomed here if not. So we, so we, this, was, this is a really nice bottoming formation. And then we started to come up here. And then we had that financial crisis. And everything tanked. And so did Bitcoin, right? But when we came down, we came down. We ended up higher than we were before. So look, high, we went higher higher high, higher low, and then we kept going up, and now we're at another higher high. This has been a bull market since 2019. It just, the swings up and down make it seem like when you know, you're bleeding out for six months, well, that's a bear market. Maybe technically it is. I don't consider it a bear market. You end higher than you started. How could that be a bear market? But that's not the point. Let me, let me start here, right here, because this is when I started the newsletter. Three days, in fact, three days after I started the newsletter, we had this crash, global financial panic, um, you know, COVID running wild, everything crashed. And at the time, I told subscribers, all 18 of them at that time, um, we need to buy. We need to buy this. Yes, it could crash more. Of course, it can crash more. But if you have money available, you're not worried about losing your job or your business. And if you can, if you can find it in yourself to put money in this market, it is very likely this is the best opportunity you will ever have again. Because if we go below $5,400 and stay there, then we'll sell. That's what my, if you're a premium subscriber, you know, that's part of the plan. That, that specific price at that specific time. If we went lower, we'll sell. Until then, it's, I must buy. Buy, buy, buy. Bye, bye. And, um, sorry, in sync. Um, in sync reference, I'm old. So the you know the that was based on history on on chain data correlations and patterns that go into the plan. Premium subscribers know what the plan is. It's also linked below. the The next thing that happened is we went up a little bit. We went up a little. You can see this right here, right? We went up a little bit, and this was actually not a little bit. That was a good fifty percent move from the bottom. Um, and, you know, we were still in the buy zone. The plan still said to buy. Uh, I, and I, but, I, but I said, I sent him an update saying, keep in mind, it's realistic to expect the price is going to crash back down to 5,400, right? It was realistic to expect we'd do something like that. Not to panic. We're still buying. That didn't happen. In fact, the price kept going up. And once it went up above here, we stopped buying. And we kept going up. We went up into the 9,000s. And everybody was emailing like, Mark, we got to sell. It's going to crash. And I posted a video telling people there's no reason to do that. Because if it goes back down, it's going to fall right back into the buy zone of, of the plan. And in any, in any way, you know, it, a, these kind of drops are insignificant for Bitcoin. That was, you know, 
I mean, it's significant. It's like percentage wise, but this is a volatile market. At the, and, you know, this is, there's no reason to stress about it. You know, I sneeze and the price moves 10%. We just, if it goes, if it does drop, then there's an opportunity to buy. There's really no reason to sell because why? We, we, there's, there's no reason to, there's nothing, there's, we're not approaching a market cycle peak. We're not going down and not coming back up. We're going up and not coming back down. So no, we're not going to, we're not going to sell. So we didn't do anything. The price went up and it went up to, you know, it kind of meandered for a little while. People got really antsy. Some people I'm sure sold. We didn't. And then the price went up and the price went up to 12,000 and over to 12,500 and people email me like, Hey Mark, why aren't we buying? Everything is going up. It's amazing. Did you check out this DeFi token? It's awesome. It's going to replace Bitcoin. You got to buy. You got to buy. Why aren't we buying? Got to buy. But we didn't buy because the plan said we're not going to buy. We already had plenty of time to buy. We had all this. This was two months. Two months we had to buy at bargain basement prices. So we had our time to buy. We're good. Now it's, we can enjoy this. We spent two months buying crypto. We're, the, the, the prices are going up. And the data that I used to analyze the market showed that there is there are things to be worried about. There are signs in the data that Bitcoin is getting too far ahead of itself. And when it does that, you, you can expect a crash. It was at the time it was either going to crash from 12,000 or it was going to go up to 14,000 and then crash. And so what we ended up doing is we, we did that. We stayed around. It was about 12,000 and we crashed. Again, it doesn't look like much. That was a 22% crash. And it was, it was fairly quick. And it dropped back down in the buy zone. So I told everybody, look, we're buying right here. We're buying. The price went back up. It actually came out of the buy zone. I said, forget about it. Money's coming in by the truckload. Everything is a great price. Institutions, everybody who I know in this space who is responsible for getting people in, getting people's money in, says money is coming in by the truckload. There are massive tailwinds, lots of momentum. I can't imagine it's going to stay this low for too long. So even though it's not in a buy zone, just buy, buy this. So the whole month of September, buy, buy, buy. So you got in, you got in down here. You got in at 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, up to 13,000. Until we went up to 13,000, we came up here. And until we really got to here, everything looked great. And then once we got to 13,000, we started to see those same signals. And we got up to 16,000. And from that point on, Bitcoin has been in a, position where it's just, it's, it's a very uh, short term. It's a very risky proposition. Now we ended up going on this parabolic run like that to our most recent peak. And everybody else got excited at 20,000. We got near 20,000. And that's when I started to get texts from people who hadn't talked about crypto in, in ages. People I said, Oh, you should buy here, buy here. This is great. This is awesome. Great opportunity. Nope. Buy here. Great opportunity. Nope. Here, nope. Now they want to get in, which is great. But Bitcoin had already gotten ahead of itself. We didn't form the foundation in the data that I look at that shows be the behaviors that reveal themselves in metrics, on-chain metrics and the way people use Bitcoin. We didn't form the foundation necessary to sustain a nice long run, that one-year, two-year boom people keep talking about, four-year cycle. We're going to go through a 2021 and a 2021, 288 thousand dollars, this and that. We didn't form that foundation, and as price keeps going up, it's going up again. As price keeps going up, the risks keep going up, while the potential rewards keep going down because the market cycle peak keeps getting closer and closer with every pump of the price. That is not a time limit. It is because when prices move very high, very quickly, Bitcoin tends to top out. We're not there yet, but every pump brings us a little closer to that. And my plan, when we get there, when we start seeing signals of the market cycle peak, we're going to get out. So the upside keeps getting smaller and smaller. The risks keep getting bigger and bigger. So it's a really hard situation right now. If Bitcoin's price stays above 35000 for even just a little bit longer, and it, it keeps just keeps going up, and we start heading back up to forty thousand. Wow, it's 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 going to take off.
and the people who sold at 30,000 saying, oh, it's the top. And they, they were probably looking at the same data I was and said, oh, this doesn't look very good. Um, so we didn't sell, we're just holding. But a lot of people did and they sold at 30K. And, and if you're a trader, that might be a great trade. You know, you take this trade, buy here, sell here, 30K, and then you see what happens. Oh, it's going back up. Okay, I'm gonna take another trade and then I'll sell up here. If you're a trader, that's fine. That's probably a really good decision. Like I said, for me, it's the long game. I want those 1,000 X, not 1,000%, 1,000 X gains. And those things take time. You gotta play the long game for those. So people who, people who sold at 30K, they're coming back in. People who held off at 42K, they're coming back in. They capitulate into the market. And then Aunt Sally calls you in the middle of the night, says, nephew Mark, buy me some Bitcoin. Uncle Morton says it's going to the moon. And then we get, and then we keep going. I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna keep going. We keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 60K, 80K, maybe even 100K. And, I, and I, I'm calling it right now. Once we go above 60K, you're going to hear people saying things like, we're closer to $100,000 than we are to $20,000. People are going to start saying things like, oh, we're way ahead of schedule. We're so far ahead of schedule. Now, it's not going to be $100,000 at the end of 2021. It's going to be $300,000 at the end of 2021. And you know, maybe we do get to $100,000. And if we get there and we go over, people are going to say it's a new par paradigm. It's never going to crash. Uh, Bitcoin forever. DeFi forever. And it's everybody needs to, you know, all the things that they said in 2017 when I got involved. And maybe it's true, but that doesn't mean there's an investment opportunity. There might be. I mean, you just have to see how the market flows, how the, how, how the movements of the market, the data, the data that goes into my plan. Opportunity and price are different things. But anytime you bought Bitcoin above $16,000, you took a risky deal. And so far, it's paying off. Let's hope it continues to pay off. But this moment is not an investment opportunity. Now, there could be an investment opportunity soon. If you're not subscribed to Crypto is Easy, so subscribe so you understand a little bit more in depth what I'm talking about. But if you're just looking to make money, I mean, Right now, there's a 50-50 chance Bitcoin crashes 50% from here. And if that seems crazy, 50%, you go down to $19,000. It's not crazy. We've already done it twice in this bull market. This, from here to here, from here to here, that was 60%. Didn't even break the upward trajectory. We were still going up. This to this was even more. And look, and we just bounced right back. And, and went to the moon. So, you know, these big crashes, it doesn't mean that this market cycle ends. It doesn't have to be a market cycle peak. In, in fact, it'll be an amazing opportunity. But if Bitcoin keeps going up, it's going to drag alt season, alt, alt, altcoins along with it, and we're going to have an amazing alt season. It's going to be amazing. Like, I don't think people realize how much momentum has been building for altcoins over the past two years, and it's all converging now but it all depends on Bitcoin. We've never had alt season when Bitcoin's price was going down. Just a very difficult situation right now. It's a very risky proposition right now. My plan gave us enough opportunities to buy Bitcoin. And I know if you're new, if you subscribed since October, you have never heard me say go buy Bitcoin. But altcoins, I've been talking about that for two months, three, over two months. Well, I mean, months and months and months. Um, it's just, if it seems like as we move forward, as we move up, that I'm the only guy saying, the only person who's not saying buy Bitcoin. I would never say don't buy Bitcoin. And I shouldn't have said that before. There's never a bad time to, to, to buy Bitcoin. But if it seems like I'm the only one saying, who, only one who is not saying, Go out and buy Bitcoin. Go just put your money in the market. Um, I hope you understand why. Is It's that long view. And looking back at the history and all the decisions that uh, have been dictated, right? You follow the plan and, and it tells you what to do. It's based on facts and data. 
click the link in the description, you'll see the plan. Um, I hope that explains it and shares a little bit of history, at least the history of what you've gotten from crypto is easy. Um, if you've been subscribed for a while, if you bought when I said to buy, look, you can't lose. If the price keeps going up, we're going to hit the market cycle peak. We're going to sell it massive gains. We'll wait for the dust to settle. We'll wait for the crash, wherever it lands. And then we'll buy back afterwards. We'll catch the bottom and we'll get all of the next bull run. And if the price goes down from here, then I need to go back. So look, yeah, so if the price goes down from here, well, we win that way too, because we're ready to buy. As soon as it get, gets back in the buy zone, we'll buy Bitcoin, we'll buy all coins, and everything will be at a massive discount in the middle of this larger secular uptrend. Like, I mean, I'm going to zoom out just so that you see what I'm talking about. This is a, this is a massive uptrend we've been on right here. Look, this is all up, not straight up, up, down, up, down, but... This is all up and it's a, this big set if it's this like big macro multi-year thing if we get that crash even better even better doesn't get much better than that um, now if you're not in that spot it's okay trust your gut uh whatever process you have for yourself when people ask me about whether they should buy crypto i tell them to skip bitcoin do altcoins um, a lot of people, they don't, they don't even know what altcoins are. They're not really interested in that. So, yeah, just don't worry about it. There will be an opportunity. When, there will be a better opportunity to buy Bitcoin. There will be a time when the opportunity is actually, it's, it's so compelling. You have to take it. At this moment, you know, it's just a different moment right now. And if you want to get into crypto, you need to do alts because the altcoins have the same downside risks as Bitcoin at this moment, but there's more reward because it's quite likely that we're heading into a massive alt season. We're not there yet, but we're heading into it. And if you want to make some money, you know, you want to play the crypto casino, it's a great time to do that because even if we do crash, if everything crashes, I mean, it's just, it's an opportunity, it's another opportunity to load up. Just keep in mind right now, this is a gambler's market and you miss the investment opportunity, you can still make some fast money flipping cryptos. You can still make fast money. You can still make good money even just buying and holding and then selling at the market cycle peak. But we are no longer in a low risk, high reward situation. And I know it seems, I, I sit here and I, at the beginning of the video, I say, oh, you know, this, any of these cryptos, they can do 10X, they can do a 1000% in a month, right? Or two months maybe three months, which is just, it, it probably blows your mind. But I, but anybody who's in the space and looks down their portfolio, and if they were allocated to, you know, DeFi DEXs, DAOs, smart contract platforms, and Bitcoin, their portfolios are, are way up. Uh, it's, you know, now granted, it's because they had a chance to accumulate from you know, 2018, 2019, 2020. But, I mean, it's, it's, it, it compounds. You come in now and yeah, you catch a 10 X, you feel like a King, but if you're buying a, a crypto that has already done a 10 X and now you're getting another 10 X, somebody who held, if they had the fortitude to hold through that time, like hopefully you have, if you have, if you've been subscribed, you've, you've been holding, you're at a hundred X. You've made a hundred times your investment. Just think about that. Those are the kind of opportunities you get after this market cycle peak when we crash, whenever that is. Maybe we go here, right? And then we crash. Maybe we even go higher and then we crash. But you have these, those are the opportunities. Those are the great opportunities. Those are the prime opportunities. And those are the ones you need to take advantage of. And we'll get those. And I'll, and, and I'll be right there with you. When we get there, I'll be right there with you. For right now, look, I spent the last three years building my crypto holdings. I'm cool. I'm happy to, I, I will continue to give my advice. I will, well, not financial advice. No, I'm not giving advice. I give you my perspective um, I'm, I, and, and you'll get that. You'll get that every week, sometimes several times a week, you're gonna get it from me. Um, but I'm not planning to take any more risks or buy more altcoins until my plan says do it. And then there are the specific recommendations I make 
for altcoin insights. Um, just because, you know, I spent three years building my portfolio. Uh, it's not, and, and because I'm trying to, um, it's just a bigger, it's a bigger picture view. If you're late to the game, you're coming in now, you've come in anytime after Bitcoin went above $16,000, it's fine. You're cool. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yep. You're, you're, you're not late in life. You're just a little late to this specific bull market. And maybe we get this really nice crash, right? Or just we kind of stall out and kind of, you know, meander for a little while and just give the market a chance to catch up for itself. Build that foundation that we never got to get, that we never got. We never got it before we passed $20,000. We didn't get that foundation. Maybe we get it now. We'll just have to see. If you wait for that moment, that moment those big shifts in momentum, the, when, when these big macro trends are, in, are, are, are to your advantage, when you can capture these massive gains, that's how you secure your wealth in digital assets, in these financial networks that are being built today. You get in at the best time when the downside is low and the upside is literally infinite. And there will be a time for that. And I'll keep you posted when that opportunity comes. It's just not this moment. And because of that, I can't say, oh, go out and buy. I can say, if Bitcoin's price keeps going up, what you have witnessed from the altcoins in January will pale in comparison to what will happen over the next few months. And maybe it's not even a few months. I don't know. Altcoins, uh, when they go through alt season, it's pretty rare. It's a rare and beautiful thing. And it doesn't last that long. But long is a relative term. Long is a relative term. A month? I don't know. I, supposedly there's some rumor going around that alt season will end in February. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but the general concept of really like, you know, not getting too wrapped up and understanding that all good things must come to an end. I think that is a really valuable thing to keep in the back of your mind. doesn't mean don't go out and, and do things, but it does mean that when you, if you're subscribed and you continue to subscribe to me, you're going to keep getting the bigger perspective. You're not going to get the, hey, here's the latest altcoin you should buy. You're not going to get the, oh, here's the latest news about how somebody is making money. You're going to get these bigger, these big, the bigger picture, the macro view, the bigger perspective. So I hope that was a helpful video. This is an amazing opportunity. I mean, it, it's very risky right now. It will not stay risky forever. We know I, well, if you're subscribed, I, will, I can tell you with fairly high certainty when we are going to, when we, when we are approaching the market cycle peak, um, once after we get to that point, I will be able to tell you with a fair amount of certainty when the coast is clear and it's a good opportunity to get back in. Everything in between is normal volatility. Just because at this moment is not a great opportunity to get in, it doesn't mean that you can't do very well in this market in this moment and for the foreseeable future. We haven't sold any crypto. Not a single Satoshi, not a single altcoin. We don't even touch our crypto except to use it for whatever legitimate purposes we have need to use it for or until the market forces us to sell because it gets so overheated. We get to that market cycle peak and we have to sell to protect ourselves from greedy people who will crash the market. MicroStrategy finally decides to take profits. Mass Mutual says, hey, price is good enough for us. Let's rebalance back into cash. Those OGs, those Bitcoin maximalists look down at their portfolio and they say, oh shit, I think I want some government money now. And we get that crash and it sends prices down 75% or more. It takes away all the work and money and investment you put in, just like it did in 2017, twice in 2013, and in 2011. When somebody else ran off with your money, with your wealth, and made you sit and wait for years, to get back to straight, to get back to where you put in. And we're going to avoid that. We're going to avoid that because there's very clear data when the market peak is approaching. You'll never know when the exact moment the market peaks is, but you don't have to. I'll explain all that. If you're subscribed, you probably already, you've probably already heard why. I will explain that if we, get, if we start to see we get to the market cycle peak, just like we did four times before, just like we will surely do a fifth time whenever that fifth time comes. And we're gonna be way ahead of it. So from this moment until that moment, don't worry about anything you've done, anything you've bought, crypto, Bitcoin, altcoins, whatever. The bottom line is 
There's never a bad time to buy Bitcoin, but sometimes are better than others. Right now is a very risky time. All coins will pretty much follow whatever direction Bitcoin goes. The altcoin market, there are a lot of dynamics that make alt season. I mean, frankly, we're probably in the middle of alt season. But I can't, I'm not going to say that until I see some very specific benchmarks that, you know, premium subscribers, you know what those are. But there are very specific benchmarks before I say, hey, we're in alt season. This is just money coming into the market. And if you like what you see, alt season is going to be amazing. At this moment, every decision is fraught with, is fraught with risk. In the future, it won't be that way. It won't stay that way forever. And as soon as it changes, I'll let you know. So we're going to be here together. We're going to we're on this ride together, up and down and all around. It's you and me, and we'll make it through. Relax and enjoy the ride.